lead to Pebble Beach, which is exactly where we are to celebrate the 75th anniversary of this wonderful brand. Absolutely delighted to be here in a wonderful part of the USA, and it can only be made better with a collection of awesome Ferrari cars that are going to be lining up here on uh, Fairway 1 at Pebble Beach. It's not only me that gets to uh, call the action, if you will, this afternoon. I'm joined by Amanda Busick, who we'll be meeting shortly. She's out there on the hallowed lawns, if you will. But right alongside me right now is Justin Bell. Listen, forgive my boyish enthusiasm, Justin, but I've never been to this event and I am thrilled to be here. What can I expect? Well, first of all, w welcome everybody uh, to the best place in the world today, <laughs> yeah. arguably. Um, you know what, it's so fun having you with fresh eyes because I'm sure there's not much in your life that you have Oh. Seen before. But when you get here, you actually really do appreciate that the depth and breadth of the car passion, the, the enthusiasm for collecting incredible automobiles really does span the decades. It's, it's almost like time travel. And when you see the earliest Ferraris all the way through to the latest offerings, you realize that this is a brand, this is a passion, this is a, a way of life that has extended for 75 years. And we're seeing it all come together here. But Pebble Beach is a very special place for Ferrari. They've have made their mark here over those 75 years, whether it's at the concourse, at the racetrack, or on the racetrack that was around the streets here. So you're in for a real treat. And as I understand it, Justin, it was uh, obviously Ferrari's legacy in history here at Pebble Beach is enormous, as you've said. But from 2017 on, we've always been on this fairway. Yeah, I mean, when they got the opportunity to take literally the prime spot on the first ferry, which I don't know whether I have more nerves or, or someone teeing off at the Masters, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a really special spot to be. And it's here all weekend and it, it's the epicenter of the Ferrari world for today. It's like Italy has come here to Pebble Beach. Well, as I said, you're not the only one and you and I are not the only people yeah. to, to really extol the virtues of this fantastic Prancing Horse brand. Standing out there on the uh, beautiful lawns on the uh, fairway somewhere. Good afternoon, Amanda Busick. You and I have had the well, benefit you guys of are uh, being part the of the Ferrari, Ferrari family I'm for a number sure of years. I'm going to have the best view in the house today. Welcome to the first fairway here at Pebble Beach in celebration of the 75th anniversary of Ferrari. From 1948, all all the way to 2022, cars have filled here on the first fairway. And I know we're going to have some special guests stop by from Italy. And Dave, I saw that red silk behind you. We're going to have a reveal of a tailor-made build in collaboration with Cool Hunting. But one of my favorites, Ferrari has meant so much to so many people that are here today. We're going to sprinkle in a couple little love letters into the broadcast of what the brand has meant to people. And Dave, I'm going to take in some more of this pomp and circumstance. So as we get ready to kick off this show, I know a very special guest is joining you on stage here in a little bit. And just to talk about more of the builds that we have, I want to go into the very beginning for Ferrari in 1948 is when this started. Uh, take a look at this 166, just absolutely beautiful. Dave, I know we're going to have a special show to you. Back to the Casa Ferrari.
Oh, thank you so much, Amanda. May I say, I'm loving the frock, if I can be so bold. You look really gorgeous out there on the uh, fairway. Yes, you're absolutely right. We have got so much to look forward to in the uh, program uh, during the course. We're going to try and bring you everything, every feeling, every emotion from here at Concorso uh, Ferrari 2022. We're live at uh, Pebble Beach, and we are really celebrating uh, the 75th anniversary of this iconic brand. Delighted to be here. Uh, the car of course are arriving as you can see on the fairway and uh, what a fantastic display it's going to be. Amanda is absolutely right we've got some special guests that will be joining us up here on the stage as well and uh, she was mentioning the love letters from various people that we've bumped into uh, randomly as we've walked around uh, Pebble Beach which has been a great opportunity for us to uh, kind of get their feelings and their emotions and warm thoughts with regards to this 75th anniversary of uh, Ferrari here here at Concorso Ferrari. So Justin uh, has already legged it from the stage and he's out there somewhere. Where are you, Justin? Well, Dave, thank you very much. And I made it out here onto the first fairway. Uh, look at these cars and you'd be mistaken to thinking that the Ferrari should be here 365 days a year, which they almost could be. Uh, they look so special, but really Ferrari at Pebble Beach have a long history, all the way back to the first road races. We should check out this video, which explains a little bit more. When you consider that racing around the roads here on the Monterey Bay Peninsula was the catalyst for all that we know today with the Pebble Beach Concorde d'Elegance, it's no wonder that Ferrari were involved from the start. In 1951, the first Ferrari to appear here at Pebble Beach was run by Jim Kimberley, who showed his 1949 166mm touring Barquetta at the second event in 1951. But as is typical with the mark, Ferrari always turn up to win. And in 1953, they did that. Alfred Ducato showed his 1953 Ferrari 212 into Vignale Coupe, and it won not only its class, it was runner-up to best of show. Also in 1953, a landmark victory in the Pebble Beach road races for the iconic Phil Hill. Ferrari would go on to win in each of the following three years. In a nod to the significance of Ferrari design and technology, in 1973, Ferrari became the first post-war mark to get its own class in the iconic Pebble Beach Concorde d'Elegance. In the world of elite car collecting, there is one award that trumps all others. And in 2014, a 1954 Ferrari 375 MM Scaglietti Coupe, owned by John Shirley, was named Best of Show. Significantly, it was the first post-war car to take the top prize in nearly five decades. What a lovely snapshot of the uh, history and a remarkable piece of film. As we mentioned earlier on, we are delighted to welcome some uh, guests onto this stage here live at uh, Pebble Beach as we celebrate this 75th anniversary of the Concorso Ferrari. And I'm delighted to welcome the president of Ferrari North America, Matteo Torres, with us this afternoon. Matteo, it must give you a very warm feeling in your heart just to be here. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. It is always a pleasure to be here at Casa Ferrari. It's always very exciting. This year we have uh, many surprises. Casa Ferrari is the home base for uh, all the Ferraristi uh, around the world that can meet in one place uh, during the Monterey Car Week. And this year we have a very special anniversary. We have the celebration of the 75th anniversary. We have a fantastic display, so we are very excited for that. This really is a, a very special edition, as you've said, of uh, Casa Ferrari. And I guess the 75th anniversary is just one element of uh, that making this so very special. Correct. So 70 years of history is, uh, uh, is a long period. We have uh, a display of uh, uh, 75 cars that are effectively celebrating each of the 75 years. Uh, amazing cars, all of them. We have a display also of our modern range, all, all the current model that we have in the production. We have uh, special cars as well. We have uh, a one-off model, so the SP48 Unica, and we also have the, the ultimate uh, car that we have just launched of the Kona series, the SP3 Daytona. 
all these amazing cars on the lawn, Matteo. I, it's it's just joyful to watch. It's it's also joyful to see the reaction of the owners of these cars as well, who take so much passion, uh, the Ferrari passion, and and they live that through these wonderful automobiles. Yeah, and you're right. I think that what we have been able to achieve uh, over these 75 years is not just to build iconic cars, but also to create this incredible community. So the Ferrari community is, uh, is composed by people that really they share the same passion, the same love for the brand, and it's incredible to be here with all of them, to have all this positive energy and such a huge enthusiasm about the brand. Of course, Matteo, as we celebrate this uh, wonderful anniversary, the 75th anniversary, it's with so much rich legacy and so much heritage, it's almost impossible to pinpoint particular elements of that. But what I find absolutely amazing about Ferrari is the fact that, you know, we could live on the legacy, we could live on the history for many, many years. But Ferrari doesn't ever stop there. There's always an inspiring future. It's always the next step ahead, isn't it? Correct. I think that we, we are always inspired by our past, but we look at the future. And uh, we have a very interesting plan for the next coming years. Our uh, chief executive officer has announced the plan for the next coming years. We have many launches. We have 15 launches for the next uh, four years. And uh, we definitely will be very surprised and impressed by the level of technology and the beauty of the design of our product. Matteo Torre, we know as president of Ferrari North America that you really enjoy this event. You're very busy meeting so many people, members of our wonderful family. Let me please thank you for sh sharing some time with us on stage and it's sharing it with our it's worldwide viewers. Please. Thank and you. And enjoy very much. Casa Ferrari. Thank, thank you. you. We will. So, uh, Matteo Torre, then, who is the uh, president of Ferrari North America, as we go back onto the uh, fairway with Amanda Busick right now. Well, Dave, we talk about the lineage of Ferrari and how important it is to people. I was just having a conversation on the lawn down here with a gentleman that called himself a grandpa and said that his grandson just drove his Ferrari on and parked on the lawn. He had the biggest smile on his face, I tell you, as everyone takes us in. And we talk about the Classic K connections. I want to talk about the connection between the 250 California and the Portofino. But you should hear it from Peter Calico, who talks about the bloodline and the connection between these two masterpieces. Well, I mean, this has been a theme in my life for 65 years. You know, longer than I've been with my wife, longer than I've been with my children. And it's something that, uh, it's kind of a nice thing to have, kind of pins my life together and all the things around that happened to me. The car we're talking about today is a 250 California in its short wheelbase version. My name is Peter Calico. We are in my house in Westchester County, New York. It's been a thing of my interest since I was 15 years old. When I came home from camp in 1958, I think, my mom bought that magazine for me about Ferraris. I was amazed by the cars, amazed by the performance. And of course, that coincided with Ferrari's winning streak at the racetrack and its publicity with, you know, people buying them and things like that. I had a 250 long wheelbase since the 1980, maybe. I always wanted a short wheelbase, and every time I wanted to buy one, the price had gone up. And finally, um, one day I had to make my mind up. I said, that's it. We're going to get it. Whatever they want, we're going to take I was lucky because we got a pretty unusual example. It has the competition engine, the radio, seat belts, pinstripe, things that don't really find on a car like that. I said, I'm taking it, that's it. Ford Fino M is a fantastic car, absolutely. I, I think it's clear when you drive any new Ferrari, the heritage that it takes from the old Ferraris. The steering, the handling, the speed, of course. So. It's a long time, man, but I can feel, feel the, the, the bloodline in it. It's just obvious to me anyway. It was one of the great things that Ferrari did, and they just stepped into the business of helping collectors identify their cars, say what was on the car, they give you the build sheets, and all of that says to me that Ferrari cares about its heritage. It, care, it cares about its past. And I always had a phrase, 
that if a company doesn't look to its past, it has no future. Our classic A connections are just inspiring pieces which just add to this wonderful event here at Pebble Beach. Concorso Ferrari 2022 on the uh, fairways of uh, Pebble Beach with these wonderful cars arriving minute by minute to form uh, what is perhaps one of the most uh, beautiful displays of cars that we are ever likely to see. I feel so privileged to be here and to be able to share it with you wherever you are around the world. We're delighted that you're there and uh, you are with us as well because it is a truly wonderful event with wonderful people and of course wonderful cars celebrating the uh, 75th anniversary of Ferrari. So, of course, we've heard from Amanda Busick and we've also heard from uh, Justin as well. Now, I'm going to put you into a little secret of Justin's, and that is he's very hard to motivate in the mornings. In fact, he needs a cup of espresso before doing anything. And he was up very early, in fact, before all the dignitaries arrived here uh, to go and get his espresso in Casa Ferrari. Well, guys, the hottest ticket in Monterey and certainly Pebble Beach this weekend is here at Casa Ferrari. So I thought I'd come in and take a look before the very important VIP guests arrive. There's no mistaking where you are. Just take a look at this room. The star of the show right here is this 1959 250 Ferrari Testarossa. When you're at Pebble Beach, there's so many incredible cars everywhere. But when you see a real classic in isolation, it reminds you just how iconic Ferrari really were with their design and also a car that did the Sebring 12 hours and many other races. Really, this is a testament to Ferrari's history. You've got pictures on the wall all the way back to the first early Grand Prix days. Of course, Ferrari guys, they like to not just drive cool cars, they also like to look good. So let's check this out. Ferrari relatively recently bought on Rocco Iannone, who is their new creative director, and he's bringing much attention to the future of design. As you can see, it's a, a new direction for the clothing, really bringing in a more youthful, energetic vibe, uh, which of course translates very well to the cars that they produce. Talking of which, you just wait. You want a Ferrari? This is what you can do to it. This is tailor-made, literally the place where a Ferrari customer can let their imagination go wild. If you can imagine it, they can provide it. And of course that design thing goes the whole way through the car, even down to the beautiful steering wheels. Where could you go with this journey? Well, pretty much anywhere. And in the case of one gentleman, he went from this room to something very special. Well, as you can imagine, imagination is the only barrier to creating incredible vehicles in rooms just like that. And today we're so lucky because right here we're about to see the reveal of a very special car. We call it the Cool Hunting Ferrari. And it is the basically the brainchild of everybody standing next to me. I'm joined by, by you again, um, Matteo. And next year we have Josh and Evan from Cool Hunting, and then we have Mr. George Wolf at the end, who's, whose car this is gonna be. First of all, Matteo, the process of bringing a car like this to life for a client, well, tell us a bit about that, because it is, Ferrari do it in a very unique way. Correct. Um, you know, this is a tailor-made car, so, and when we say tailor-made, we talk about the limitless imagination that uh, our clients can have, at the same time, in our ability, combined with our ability to really put together all these elements in a beautiful car. And the TeleMake program is uh, definitely the greatest opportunity that we can have to satisfy these needs. And at the same time, really, the, the beauty of this specific car is that we cooperate with uh, two very creative minds, Josh and Evan. They have been the perfect partner to showcase the tailor-made program because we went outside what is the normal automotive materials. You know? It's not a car that uh, is using materials that are designed for the automotive. It's taking inspiration from the craftsmanship from Japan and is really fantastic in terms of result to see all this capacity, all this craftsmanship combined all together in this such useful result. Well, I'm going to move past you, just talk to Josh and Evan. 
when I was reading about what you guys had done, you'd just come back from a trip from Japan, you were full of sort of, I guess, the Oriental inspiration. How you synthesized all that information, all those sort of tactile, emotional points, how did you put that into the car? We've, we've spent a lot of time in Italy, we've spent a lot of time in Japan, and, and when we had the opportunity to work on this project, we thought it would be really interesting to marry the cultures and to figure out how to really celebrate Japanese artisans and Japanese craft by creating new materials, by creating new processes, and developing an interior and colorway for this car that uh, kind of push the tailor-made program a little bit a little bit harder than maybe it's been pushed before. What I love about this everybody is that normally it's just the client like George there with the tailor-made people but now we put two creative people right in the middle of that process. Evan, do you, I mean, I'm sure you challenged them, but it, what was the was it a challenge with sort of endless boundaries. I mean, because I've looked in that room, as I said, ballistic materials, every kind of leather, every kind of denim. Talk about the materials, the textures. It's kind of funny. So I think what you're going to see here is a car that the interior is made from upcycled 75-year-old vintage kimonos. So this is not something you're going to find in a typical tailor-made showroom. But when you have that conversation with the designers at tailor-made, and you say, this is my dream. I want to make this vintage kimono into the interior of this car. Uh, they can make it happen. Wow. Well, I'm going to move over to, to George, who, am I right in saying that other than the conceptual drawings and how it's evolved, you haven't seen the car yet? I've never seen the car. This is the first time I'm going to see it. So I imagine that this is not your first Ferrari. So you've, you've got a long line of them in your garage. What is it about that tailor-made expression, about seeing something that was a basically your imaginations coming to life. Well, this is different because usually it's, it's just me and a designer involved in a process. And uh, this time it was two incredible uh, designers that put this together and, and I'm, I'm a spectator and in love with the concept, in love with the marriage of Jap the Japanese culture and the Italian culture and super excited to see it. And Matteo, I'm sure it takes the right customer to find the right car. Do you, do you find that as, as we do these projects? Do you find that, because Ferrari is so unique, do you find that there's almost the right customer for the right project? It's always like that. There is always this magic. And I think that Georgia uh, is the perfect owner for this car because there is a shared passion behind. So his passion for uh, Japan, his passion for the kimonos. So everything was the perfect combination. And uh, when we had the opportunity to offer that to George, we have so many requests for this car, really. You cannot imagine, but George was definitely the perfect candidate. And we were very happy to offer the opportunity to him. So congratulations, George, really. You are very lucky. Well, what do you think, everyone? Shall we see the car? I think it is that time. Let's, uh, we, I think the silks are about to be revealed. Uh, well, actually, we should do it if no one else is going to do it. Yeah. Come round. Okay, everybody, the first time. Get ready to a big round of applause when we see the car. Woo! <laughs> wow. So there you have it, George. What do you think? Unbelievable. Yeah. It's spectacular. The color is liquid. What, what is the color, actually? Uh, it's indigo, um, but it's, it, 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 it looks wet. You know, honestly, I want to touch it because it looks liquid. Um, but, <laughs> well, I think we should let George get inside the car, so I'm going to go around this, this side. I can tell you, you're going to have to have a look later, everybody, but the car is extraordinary. If our camera goes in there. Now, obviously, this is a one-of-a-kind Roma model. Um, crafted by the bespoke tailor-made department. And talk about what you've done inside. Several elements. So we mentioned the vintage kimono. So that is, those kimonos are disassembled, uh, cut into strips, woven into new fabric. And that fabric lines the whole cabin of the car. And it also is part of the seats. So we couldn't quite make it work um, from a durability point of view to make the entire seat out of the fabric. So that's why we have the inserts there. We have a one-of-a-kind conchaletto. So this is a completely custom conchaletto that's never been modified in any Ferrari before. Um, and that is inspired by a Japanese craftsperson who works in copper. Copper accents throughout the car. One of the most beautiful things is on the ceiling of the car. So the roof liner, the headliner of the car, is made from two separate 
indigo dyed hides that have been woven together in Italy. So when we talk about this marriage, it literally is this marriage of craft and passion. And that is a very private moment that the owner can experience. It also has its own crest. So there's a, on the sill of the door and on the uh, hand rest inside the car is this crest. And that crest represents two specific components of the car. And the last element that's customized here is the door handles. And those are also woven in Italy in a traditional pattern from a, a Japanese samurai sword. Wow, absolutely splendid. I think everyone would agree this is truly gorgeous. You have to come and see up close inside. That is very special. While I negotiate my drive in this, I'm going to throw it back to Dave. If you're going to negotiate a drive in that, I uh, sincerely hope that I'm going to be your first passenger, Justin. Wow. Just when you think things can't get any more special, they do. Here at Concorso Ferrari 2022, we're live from Pebble Beach as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of Ferrari and what a reveal that was. Absolutely amazing. The cars, of course, are all assembling out there on the fairway and looking absolutely beautiful. A stunning display across every decade of the rich heritage and history of the Prancing Horse brand here with uh, Ferrari. Absolutely wonderful to see. And Amanda is down there right in the heat of it, right in the heart of it, Amanda. All right, all right. Well, I know I said I had the best view in-house, but I did want to see that feel all day long. Well done, JB. That was spectacular. Well, the Prancing Horse has been competing in F1 since 1950. It is the longest serving and most successful team in F1 history. You can only imagine how significant and important that could mean for a former driver. Stefan Johansson not only dreamed of becoming a Ferrari driver, he made that happen. You're about to hear a little love letter from Steffi, and I think you will feel the emotion pouring out of his words. When I was a little boy, I remember in school, uh, the teacher gave us uh, the questions, do you have had three wishes in life? What would they be? And I, and I said, my first wish was to be a Formula One driver. And my second wish was to drive for Ferrari. And then there was something else. I can't remember what the third one was, but I managed to achieve two of the, my wishes and to be experience this whole life of Ferrari, which even to this day, which is more than 30 years after I stopped driving for them, is still a huge part of my life. Everywhere you go, people you meet, Ferrari means so much to so many people. And, um, you know, it's just been a blessing really to be, to be part of this great family and to, you know, continue having relationships with all the people that still work there and some of them that already left, you know, it, it really is a totally unique experience in racing. There will never ever be a team like Ferrari and the, just the feeling of being part of this whole thing, which is just magical. And what you could see there with Stefan Johansson was actually his art behind him. He's a wonderful man, a wonderful driver, hugely charismatic character and a great designer as well. Stefan Johansson, just one of our a number of love letters that we're bringing you here in Concorso Ferrari 2022 here at uh, Pebble Beach. Now, I'm absolutely delighted uh, to welcome alongside me Andrea Modena, who is uh, head of Ferrari Classic K. And Andrea, if I may, for those who are perhaps unaware, if you like, of the work of the Classic A department that you run, can you tell us a little bit more about your department, please? Sure, Dave. First of all, thank you for, uh, for this situation. Thanks uh, for uh, all the people attending this uh, amazing event. Pebble Beach uh, is a part of the story of uh, the automotive industry and uh, for sure is part of the story of Ferrari and of the amazing story of Ferrari and the love that the US market expressed for, for Ferrari. Uh, Ferrari Classic, uh, what is our goal, our uh, main objective is to preserve our history. 75 years of history, we are here celebrating this uh, incredible uh, brand, what uh, a man has been able to deliver along uh, his story, along his life, uh, his passion. 
Ferrari Classic has the main responsibility to keep his dream alive, looking at what he has done yesterday and preserving that for tomorrow. Um, so we look at the authenticity of the car, we grant the authenticity of the car, we help people keep the authenticity of the car through a certification process and a restoration process when it need to get the car certified. You mentioned that authentication and that certification. Presumably you have a library, an archive of documents that you can draw upon, Andrea, that help you uh, provide that authenticity to some of these wonderful cars. You, you, you are really uh, incredible because you are helping me <laughs> entering this subject in the most easy way. Um, our founder, Enzo Ferrari, was a visionary man. Since the very beginning, he realized how important information and granting the right information is to preserve and to move forward. And so, from the time zero, from the very first car, he pretended that his people register everything. Everything has to be recorded, everything has to be stored. Uh, you mentioned library. Yes, we have uh, an extended library, including all the documents uh, referred to each single car that has been produced from 1947 till today, till uh, uh, the car that uh, are sorting from the lines in these days, and uh, for uh, all the model, also the original drawing that let us, uh, during the restoration process, uh, go back to the authenticity of the project. Extraordinary. And you, you really undersell, I think, if I may say, the Classic A department and that, 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 that rich history. And, and today here at uh, Pebble Beach, Andrea, we have a tremendous array of examples of wonderful cars from Ferrari's rich 75 years. Are there, and sorry I'm putting you on the spot here, are there one or two examples that perhaps best highlight the work of your department? Perhaps have provided the biggest challenge for you. <laughs> uh, Dave, th this time you're not helping me, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I accept the challenge. Um, 75 years of history uh, expressed uh, year by year with the 75 different cars uh, in front uh, of us. Uh, an incredible job, uh, an incredible expression of the passion that uh, uh, this market and uh, all the Ferraristi in the world have been able to put together. And all the cars that we are in front of us are in a way or another certified or ongoing under the certification process, which is again an expression of the trust that our passionate customer and collectors are showing for Ferrari, for the brand, for our, our department. And two cars uh, you were mentioning. We can consider uh, 1957, mm -hmm. uh, 335S, uh, a great car, a 12-cylinder front engine, the expression of uh, Enzo's ideas of mechanical engine, so a 12-cylinder, uh, a car that has raced with the Scuderia Ferrari, so it's an official car, uh, that uh, has uh, a very incredible palmares, uh, among which uh, the Sebring 12 hours, a second place at the Mille Miglia 1957. So a very important car in our history, driven by many important official driver of, uh, of the Scuderia. Uh, the second one uh, I would like to, to, to mention, uh, and uh, considering his history with us, uh, is uh, 1967, so we go 10 years later, uh, Dino 206 S, um, rear engine, V6, uh, again a car with a, a great uh, history and a car that uh, during uh, the official practice uh, at the Sebring 12 hour crashed, got fired and uh, was in a very bad condition. The car has been restored a very first time in the 80s and unfortunately without the right information. So the car has been uh, looking similar to the shape that it has uh, 
uh, when uh, past the gate, uh, the, fam the famous arch in Maranello, but uh, really it was not like that. So the owner uh, asked the Ferrari Classic to keep the car back to the day that sorted the gate. And uh, using the library we were mentioning before, we go through a very important restoration pro process, including uh, the chassis, including all the mechanical part, engine, gearbox, differential, uh, all, all, all the parts. We go back uh, to the original, authentic uh, shape of the body, and now the car that uh, you will see here is uh, the car that uh, in 1967 uh, went to that event, uh, unluckily with not the uh, results that was expected, but we can admire here on, on the field. And I think this is a, an incredible expression of what Ferrari Classic can, can do. I have to say, you said I'm making your job easy. Your mind is encyclopedic. The way you can come up with the facts of the wonderful work you do in the uh, Ferrari Classic A department. And uh, we've paid homage there to the uh, V6 and the uh, V12, of course. Andrea Modena, thank you so much for spending time with us and explaining the Ferrari Classic A department to us. You do great work and please continue to do that great work for many decades to come. Thank you, Dave. And most important, it's nice because I know that we met also on the racetrack. Indeed. So it will be funny <laughs> to see you in a different situation. <laughs> thank see you so you. much. Andrea Ciao, Modena, then the head of uh, Ferrari Classic A. And as I said, we paid homage to both the V6 and the V12. Let's continue to pay homage to Mr. Enzo Ferrari's V12 as we welcome yet another Classic A connection. I remember my first memory of Ferrari very clearly. It goes back to 1952. I was eight years old, came home from school one day, and my older brother was in the living room of our apartment in Manhattan, and he had a, a, a model, a red model, in his hand. And I asked him, well, what, what, what is that? And he said, it's a Ferrari, the fastest road car in the world. It was an Italian car. So I immediately had this affinity towards the fast car, Ferrari. We lived in Manhattan, but we dreamed about cars. My name is Lawrence Oriana. We're in Greenwich, Connecticut, We're looking at the Nart Spider, 275 GTB4 Nart Spider. Well, it's a great, iconic Ferrari, my judgment. First of all, it's a V12, which is important. It's a beautiful car with great performance, and its history has proved that to be the case. Well, it's one of 10. It has a racing history. It was brand new. It raced in the 12 hours of Seabrook, finished second in its class. It's also a beautiful car, not only fast, but beautiful. The A12 is the concept of the North Spider using today's technology. A both V12 engines normally aspirated, for which Ferrari is known. Two-seater, long hood to house the V12, convertible top. Ferrari is certifying Ferraris as being authentic. And I think this is very important in today's world, when some of these cars have increased to very high values. And having Ferrari or dedicate the car is important. Stay on the path of the track that you're on. It's because Ferrari has a great heritage. It has a passion to, to race, to win. That continues today at Ferrari. What I love about these Classic A connections is the connection between past and present. I was just talking to an owner on the lawn here, and I said, what's your favorite part of the day so far? And he said, I love seeing the old juxtaposed with the new. Go back to the Steffi Johansson feature, and he talked about how important it was to his life and being a racing driver. But could you imagine actually racing for Enzo Ferrari himself? Well, our next guest, Derek Bell, did just that. Joining Ferrari in the late 1960s, Listen to his words on what a special time of his life that was. Hello everybody, my name is Derek Bell and I had the amazingly good fortune, aged 18 in 1959, to be driven down to the Italian Grand Prix at Monza by my stepfather. We got down there, we sat in the grandstands, little knowing that nine years later I would be sitting on that same grid in a Formula One Ferrari for my very, very first Grand Prix. 
I mean, absolutely amazing. Something beyond my wildest dreams, in fact. You know, what I saw was the red cars in photographs. And there I was driving one. During the time that ensued, I got to know Enzo Ferrari actually remarkably well. We, several occasions I got invited out to dinner by me, picked me up in his two plus two and off we'd go for a drive in the country. It was just wonderful. At the same time, my first professional race was in Formula Two. My first Formula One race was in Formula One Ferrari. My first Le Mans in 1970 was in, a, in, a, in the works Ferrari team as well, in a red Ferrari. And it, following that, I actually won Le Mans five times overall, but sadly never with Ferrari. But I would never forget the amazing experience of driving those beautiful red cars, those screaming V12 engines as we rushed around the tracks of the world. The greatest experience, in fact, of my life. Well, that's kind of emotional. Uh, I hope you could see from the video, but my father really does think of his days at Ferrari, that relationship he had to what extent it was with Enzo Ferrari himself as one of the most significant parts of his career. Even though most of his motor racing success was with another brand, he still remembers putting on the race suit very fondly. Uh, and certainly it is one of those iconic moments. If you drove for Enzo Ferrari himself, it's like a badge of honor. But let's talk about racing uh, what, and what it meant to Enzo. For him, it was really the spirit of his road-going cars that he wanted to see out on the road. Therefore, Grand Touring, GT racing cars. And GT racing through the decades all the way up to today has been a formative part of Ferrari's heritage. If you think about it, you watch the car that you drive on the road out on the racetrack, it's a pretty good way to signify that the car you're driving is the best of the best. This is a little bit about the history of Ferrari in GT racing. The word Ferrari is synonymous with motorsports. Over the decades, they've won 14 World Sports Car Championship titles and four WEC titles, accumulating nearly 1,500 race wins and 1,600 class wins internationally. But it's at the major races that they really made their mark. Nine overall Le Mans 24-hour wins and 35 class victories. Five overall Daytona wins and 18 class victories. And when it comes to the hardest race of all in North America, the Sebring 12 hours, 12 overall wins. And in the modern era, the 488 GT3 has won 107 titles and almost 500 wins since its debut in 2016. But it's soon to be replaced with the 296 GT3, which will also make its on-track debut in 2023. In very exciting news, Ferrari will return to the top category at the Le Mans 24 Hours with its all-new Le Mans Hypercar in 2023 in the FIA World Endurance Championship. And with all this on-track global success, it is no wonder that they've captured the hearts and minds of the true racing fans for 75 years. What a piece, what a film, what we have got to look forward to in terms of Ferrari. I mean, we were looking there at the GT history, but the GT future looks so, so good as well. I, for one, cannot wait for Le Mans next year. It's going to be very, very special indeed. Talking of very special, we are in a special place. This is Pebble Beach 2022, the Concorso Ferrari, with all these wonderful cars across fairway number one here at this uh, brilliant Golf Links course. A thrill to be here, a thrill to bring you uh, this program and uh, just some of the emotions that we see that run rich throughout all the owners and through as Justin has said, all the Ferrari Easter who love these cars and love this brand. And there is so much to celebrate across the uh, 75 years. Earlier on, I took a look around some of the cars on display and it was very, very difficult to uh, pick one or two that uh, formed my favorite. In fact, absolutely impossible because I pretty much love them all, if I'm honest with you. Delighted that you are with us. Delighted that you can share this uh, wonderful moment, this wonderful afternoon here in uh, Pebble Beach. And so popular have our Classic A connections proven to be, we're going to give you not just one, but another two now. Classic A connection from Pebble Beach. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, it's really the Italian origin of my family. Um, my parents are Italian. I was born in Argentina, but I then came to the US 20 years ago. Really, my first memory is from Ferrari uh, watching the Formula One in the 80s with my father. And um, Ferrari is always uh, represents Italy in so many ways. And it's, uh, for me, it's, it's like a, a, a dream car since I was a small kid. My name is Leo Biagini. I have a Dino 246 GT from 1971. I fell in love with the Dino when, the first time I saw it. I love the GTS, but for me, the GT is really keeps the, the, the shape of the car uh, much better. The car is in great condition. It's, uh, it's good to drive uh, the, on a weekly basis. And I, I like that it had a classic um, certification. So that for me was important. With the 296, I mean, it's a completely new generation of, of a car. It's uh, the shifting, the driving, the acceleration of the 296 is one you feel like you're in a Formula One car. Having this joy of, of being able to, to watch pieces of art really created and, and maintained during the years on the people like us that we, we follow and we love uh, Ferrari. One of the reasons I chose my specialty, actually. A lot of surgeons will have one specific thing that they do. For me, I do kind of surgery everywhere, from neck all the way down to the feet, yeah. You have to have a lot of patience, that's for sure. I mean, I think that uh, patience and ability to just be calm under circumstances that are pretty uh, intimidating and challenging. So I'm Michael Shapiro. We're in Southampton, New York, and uh, I have a Ferrari 308. So my first Ferrari memory um, was growing up in the house, we always had car magazines and I used to read them you know, whenever I could find one. Um, and my dad was a bit of a car guy and we used to go to dealerships and my first memory of a Ferrari is going to the Fort Lauderdale Ferrari dealership and coming in and seeing in the gate there was a 308 sitting right there. To this day, I've always loved 308s. And I started looking for a car once I moved out here to Southampton. I wanted something uh, fun, uh, something with a convertible, and uh, I happened to talk to a mechanic who knew of a 308 in the area, and uh, went to test drive it. As soon as I drove it, I, I bought the car. I, was, I fell in love with it, so this is my car. But when I got into the F8, it was fantastic to try the paddle shifter, and uh, the performance was phenomenal in the car and felt very similar to the 308, I'm sure, back in 1985, when you first sat in that car and realized what a, a, a machine that was. Yeah, well, thank you, Ferrari. I had a, 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 an opportunity to have one of your cars, and I love it. And I grew up uh, loving the car, so you've added much value to my life, and I appreciate it. And hopefully, we have another 100, 200 years more of Ferrari to come. Well, it's like beauty upon beauty, and I'm out here with the amazingly gorgeous new Ferrari SP3 with Flavi Flavio Manzoni, who is the chief design officer for Ferrari. We've talked before, and every year you look equal to the cars, but this time <laughs> the car may beat you. Uh, this car is so beautiful, Flavio. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. It's, uh, I have to say, one of my favorite Ferraris. <laughs> I love it because the car started from a dream. The dream of uh, recreating the spirit of uh, uh, sport prototype, but with a very modern and futuristic touch. So the idea was to catch the spirit, which is a combination between performance and beauty, so, which in the past was really uh, incredible. If you think about cars like the 350 Can-Am or the 330 P3 P4 or uh, the, the uh, other, other pro sport prototype, I mean, this the beauty of the car was unbelievable. So the idea was basically to create some, a car which is also a sculpture, a piece of art, a sculpture in, in motion. Yeah. I mean, I see bits of many of the cars that we've seen from Ferrari's past. I was with the 512 a minute ago. There's a little 512 in this car, especially at the rear. There are some nodes. I mean, I can, we cannot say that there are specific elements. It's just a, um, a kind of uh, meta language, a kind of language that is uh, typical of Ferrari, typical of this uh, category of cars that in my opinion is really inspiring. So uh, it, has been, it has been fantastic to design this car. The design process was really 
uh, smooth, very strong, very passionate, with a lot of enthusiasm. My team and I, we were really crazy for this project. And what is the initial inspiration point? When you first, do you put pencil to paper still? Or do you go straight to the computer? No, no, first pencil and then 3D, we call them the, the, the 3D sketch models. Uh, the idea was basically to create something really sculptural, a beautiful shape, as you can see yeah. on the body side. I think this is a good example of the drama of the form that you wanted to create. Yeah. So, uh, creating a lot of emotion uh, in, in instantly, this, this was the idea. And we work on the proportions. As you can see, there is a kind of uh, uh, dynamic imbalance because the rear is a very powerful and sensual uh, volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The front, I mean, there is this beautiful facet on the body side, which creates a tension. And the cabin is a kind of wraparound uh, bubble, yeah. a glass bubble, small, with big shoulders. So I, th I think there are so many interesting elements that makes the car so, so interesting, so beautiful. Well, you know Flavio's done his job when the car looks fast, when it's standing still. That's the good thing. Um, Amanda, this is another car that I've got to try and get myself into. Well, in addition to the 75th anniversary of Ferrari that we're celebrating here today, we're also celebrating another milestone. It is the 30th anniversary of the Ferrari Challenge. Ferrari Challenge is the largest and longest running single make racing series in the world. With tremendous growth over the last 30 years, we had over 70 entries at some of our races this season. So well done to all the Ferrari Challenge drivers. I know many of them are here celebrating with us here this weekend. We love your presence. It's great to see you guys hanging out on the lawn with us and the evolution of the challenge car on display here on the tee box here on the first fairway. Let's take a look back over the 30 years of the Ferrari Challenge Series North America. The emotion in that video is absolutely epic. I tell you, there is nothing quite like watching a racing driver achieve. And what a weekend we have had here celebrating Ferrari's 75th anniversary. I was able to swing by a high-powered women's event last night here at the Casa Ferrari. Matteo Torre gave some words to us women, but just a motivating weekend all around. Happy anniversary, Ferrari. But I want to go back to the Ferrari challenge. We caught up with Jeffrey Nunberg at at Indianapolis Motor Speedway recently. In his sophomore season, Jeffrey Numberg has 10 top 10 finishes, and he talks about his love of racing in Ferrari Challenge. Since I was a little boy, I've always played with model toys of Ferrari, 
hoping and dreaming one day that I could own a Ferrari. And today I'm very fortunate to have worked hard and, and been able to purchase a couple of Ferraris of my own. Today we're here at Indianapolis Racing Ferrari Challenge and to be in a Ferrari race car is just unbelievable and quite the honor, frankly. I never thought that I would achieve this in my lifetime and, and it's just a pleasure to be around Ferrari and other Ferrari enthusiasts, people who love Ferrari the way I do. It's a passion that I've enjoyed my entire life. Great to hear from uh, Jeffrey Nuremberg and of course the Ferrari Challenge is particularly dear to me, Justin Bell, because yeah. I've been the voice of it for a number of years, not only uh, in uh, Europe and the UK, but also fleeting appearances here in North yeah. America and one or two in Asia Pacific as well. It's a remarkable one make and I guess it just, it just symbolizes what Ferrari is and what it means and of course we're celebrating all of that here at uh, this Concorsa Ferrari at Pebble Beach. Yeah, for me, what you see with the Ferrari Challenge all around the world is I know friends who had a dream to go racing, mm -hmm. but they went and did the sensible thing and made money and were, became successful. But the dream, that burning passion to get behind the wheel in competition was what they wanted. And to, Ferrari gave them the chance to do that. Yes. You wear the best race suits in the world with the right badge on and you get to drive these incredible cars at, at extraordinary speeds. You basically get to do what you want to do in your own car, but the blue flashing lights behind you will stop you. So I'm, I'm a massive fan and remember, Ferrari were the first. There have been many imitators, but Ferrari were the first people to do that. And I've got to say, uh, I've never done a race, but I still have my license, guys, in case anyone is offering. Do, no. you know, do you know what? I think we could probably make that happen, you know? <laughs> there have been, for me, so many highlights today. Your reaction to your father's Classic A connection was, was, was lovely. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was really, really nice. But for you and I to be part of something where we unveil the car that is behind us here, and I said as I reacted to it that just when you think things can't get any more special, Ferrari have this amazing ability to turn it on its head and say, actually, we can do something more. Well, that's what Taylor made for me is all about. When I got to see the, the type of materials, the textures, I'm going, oh my God, there's so much choice. But that's why they marry them to a personal dresser, effectively, someone that can work with them through the whole process. Because let's face it, Ferraris should have a style and a quality and maybe sometimes they need to nudge in the right direction to say this is the way the car will look best that is the that is the experience uh, of everyone that works here and as you can see have you you've never seen a bad one yet have you so i think it's just the ultimate expression and like i said at the beginning your imagination is the only barrier to making a car like this when we have uh, been waxing lyrical with uh, some of the uh, uh, thousands of people that are here enjoying this uh, Concorso Ferrari, whether they be owners or whether they be Ferrari fans, there is one conduit, there's one common across, across all of them, and that is the sheer passion that you have for this brand, the Prancing Horse brand, Ferrari, celebrating its uh, 75th anniversary. I'm going to be really bold here and say, Justin, in my experience, I don't feel that I've ever experienced that with any other brand. I'd say that's true. I think you, one thing that unites everybody who is here at Pebble Beach this weekend on the Monterey Bay Peninsula is a shared passion for the automobile. And yes, obviously by nature, by virtue of the kind of cars that are here, there's, uh, there's, there's only certain people are privileged enough to buy cars like this, but there is no restriction on the passion. So you might have someone who can own an USB3 standing next to a kid who's got a little BMW and the smallest one possible and 30 years old. In that moment, they're sharing passion. Yes. And for me, that is what Pebble Beach is all about. So if I had one take home from this, it's, it is sensory overload. It's brought to you by Ferrari and it really is time travel from the 50s all the way through to today. So I hope you enjoyed that at home as much as we did because I can you imagine what the next 75 years will bring? Wow, it's gonna be absolutely amazing. And I've got so much to take away from this and uh, I will and I hope you have enjoyed it as much as Amanda and Justin and myself have in terms of bringing this to you. Thank you so much for watching. And if I can say just one thing as we say goodbye, Forza Ferrari.